Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, let's just keep um, I'm going to refer to page 44 of the business plan. Um, in, the, in economic development and trade and across government, this commitment has been operationalized through the adoption of gender-based analysis plus, GBA plus, and the establishment of a center of responsibility to assess the gender and diversity implications <clears throat> pardon me, of engagement processes, policies, programs, and initiatives. Uh, is there a corresponding commitment to implement um, UNDRIP? Okay, forgive me, member. Uh, you were talking about GBA plus, and then how does this relate to UNDRIP? Or is there a corresponding commitment to implement UNDRIP? Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Premier Notley has been very, very uh, clear on the fact that uh, our government is looking at. Uh, <clears throat> we've been doing an inventory of all of our existing programs to see how and where they fit with the the goals of of UNDRIP. Um, and also looking at uh, at opportunities to enhance um, and, and to look toward um, meeting some of those those targets. And so it's an it's an ongoing basis or an ongoing process. I know that uh, Minister Fian and Indigenous Relations have been working very closely with all of the uh, ministries, similarly to the status of women working with uh, with all departments. To okay, uh, so that's a yes. We're looking at ways to uh, to meet the targets of UNDRIP. There are protocol tables that each of the ministries participate in. In fact, I just sat down with uh, the Treaty 8 table uh, two weeks ago to, to talk to them about uh, economic development opportunities with Indigenous communities. Um, and so uh, um, there's a number of steps that we're doing to move forward uh, to try to meet uh, some of the goals of UNDRIP. How many uh, EDT staff in Alberta have received training in, sorry, I keep peeking over my glasses, in, um, in GBA plus and in UNDRIP? I am going to uh, defer this question over to Matt Michelsi. I mean, we may, we may, I'm guessing that we may not have that number on the, off the tip of our fingers. Sorry, we do not have that number. I know there's a, a, a number of staff have certainly gone through the, the, uh, uh, seminars that have been put on by uh, the Status of Women's Department. The, but the exact number, I'm sorry, we do not have. The, uh, but on the uh, UNDRIP implementation, the government and the, the public service is undertaking a three-year uh, program to get all staff through the what's called the blanket exercise. That, and uh, that's about to be initiated, I think, in June. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, two, two things out of that. Um, first of all, it's, it's difficult to um, be able to measure the effectiveness of a program if you're not taking measurements along the way as to how many people have participated in the training. So I'd really encourage you to capture that information. I think it's important. And um, <clears throat> GBA Plus is actually a two-hour training online that you can take through the federal government. So it's easily accessible. You don't have to actually wait for the Status of Women Ministry to bring that to you. Um, <clears throat> how many EDT staff abroad have received training in both of these? <clears throat> That's another great question, Matt. So uh, th the, uh, our locally engaged staff, I, I don't believe, have been exposed to the GBA Plus training. The uh, staff, we've, I think we've got three staff now that are uh, Canadian-based but uh, internationally deployed who have taken that training. Well, if, if I can say, member, that uh, that you know this is is something that's an ongoing effort, and and I appreciate um, we do record the number of, of staff that have gone through the GBA plus training. I don't have that number handy right now, uh, but the goal is quite frankly to have all uh, all civil servants go through uh, both of, of those training programs. It's just a matter of time uh, for them to be able to uh, to take them. Is there, uh, is there one particular person or one um, part of your ministry that takes responsibility for implementation of both of these programs? Uh, yes. Is he here? Oh. I, I'm going to call on Toby Schneider if we have a microphone <laughs> uh, to be able to, uh, to talk about that. 
Thank you. Yes, there is one area in, designated within each ministry as this is moving through the entire public service. In, in, uh, in our ministry, it's, uh, it's part of my area to spearhead the entire ministry working through what are the collective actions that will be taken, which include many of the things you've mentioned, such as ensuring that training uh, would happen across the ministry with each of our public servants. Uh, to ensure that we have processes to evaluate and measure how we are doing using statistics, and that is an ongoing uh, challenge across the Alberta government to improve our supply of high-quality statistics to understand both where we are and where we're going on this. Uh, there is also the ability then to built into ministries to evaluate our policy structures and to ensure that we have um, not entered in with any type of unconscious bias or if there are programs that uh, that certainly we have a variety of programs that we can understand on balance how those programs are uh, look through a GBA plus lens so that is uh, that is a cross ministry effort there are people within each of the divisions uh, each of the four divisions of our ministry that are involved in that process it's a very broad process and could I assume that UNDRIP is similarly um, being evaluated and executed? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> kind of along the same lines, uh, something I know that's really important in my writing is um, New Canadians coming to Canada, they have professional designations and training in their country of origin. Um, I know I notarize a lot of documents. And has economic development and trade evaluated or are they participating in any sorts of programs to help expedite these processes? I know even within Alberta, we have a disparity between post-secondary institutions about what kind of training people receive. Um, and and I know a number of these people have a great contribution to make. I mean, diversity is certainly one of our strengths. Mm -hmm. So what is economic development and trade doing in this area to help um, bring professionals who are here already from other countries into our workforce in a, a appropriate capacity more quickly? Yeah, another great question, member. So, you know, this is, is spearheaded by the Ministry of Labour. Uh, I can tell you that we do work uh, with them. So, you know, part, part I think, of, of your, your question and comment is on um, credential recognition. Uh, which again is is done uh, uh, jointly with the federal government, and in some cases it is the feds who who have and and give that that designation. Uh, I agree that more can be done as far as expediting that process. The, the number of professionals that uh, who have may may have practiced uh, in a field in other countries um, is is significant, and they come to to Canada and to Alberta, and they're unable to to practice. So. Uh, it is something that, that we provide support to labour. I mean, the other thing that, that we do in economic development and trade, and, and what I think is, is a fascinating statistic, are the number of new Canadians and immigrants who, uh, who possess uh, a number of skills required for, to be a successful entrepreneur. And so whether it's taking risk, you know, uh, um, being uh, creative, innovative, et cetera. And so uh, we do look at... Uh, at uh, uh, supports through economic development and trade for uh, new Canadians or entities that work with new Canadians to be able to provide some some support uh, in the startup space. Again, Business Link uh, is a great entity that uh, that provides uh, support uh, for uh, for entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, but also new Canadians. Um, and so I, I can't tell you off the top because uh, going back to the to credential recognition, because that is primarily labor. Uh, but we do provide uh, uh, support uh, where we can as far as uh, recognizing, you know, contributions that new Canadians make and that the sooner that, that their credentials can get recognized, the sooner that, uh, you know, that they can uh, contribute even more um, on a number of fronts. Great. 